Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here, and I wanted to bring you my review of The Fablemans, which is the latest Steven Spielberg offering. And if you know anything about me, if you follow the channel at all, you know that I'm a huge Steven Spielberg fan. I am of the humble opinion that he's the best director alive. Um, obviously, that's subjective and totally up for debate, but I just am a huge fan of every one of his movies. So anytime something new comes out, even if it's not something that would totally be in my wheelhouse for the kinds of movies that I typically like, I'm going to see it. I'm going to give it a fair shake. I just went and saw this at my local theater with my wife, um, and it's a longer movie. I think it was something like two hours and 30 minutes-ish, maybe a little bit longer than that. But I just wanted to give you my opinion on it, talk a little bit about you know, whether or not it's actually an Oscar contender, whether or not it's something that you should make an effort to go and check out if you also enjoy Spielberg films. So let's talk about that. Hey, as always, if you're enjoying the content, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps out a lot, and please be sure to subscribe. So really what this movie is, is sort of a fictionalized autobiography, if you want to sort of look at it that way. It's all about Spielberg's life, shown through the eyes of a character named Sammy Fableman and his family. And so what you get is sort of a glimpse of sort of Spielberg's childhood, and this is sort of well documented in terms of the production of the movie, the writing of the, the movie, all of that kind of stuff. Again, in sort of a fictionalized version to show you sort of his background and really, you know, what this movie ends up being is kind of two things, right? It seems like it's a piece of cathartic art, right? It's really meant, I think, for Spielberg to kind of, you know, work through some things um, that he's got in his past. But I think more than anything, it's a celebration of filmmaking. It's a celebration of the medium of film, what it is as an art form, what it can accomplish, and all of that. From a directorial point of view, there's a lot of signature Spielbergian stuff going on here. John Williams does the music, but it's a very understated type of score. It's not sort of the soaring stuff you get with Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones. It's none of that kind of stuff. And rightfully so, you know, the music is meant to underscore the emotions of the different characters and different scenes that are happening here. And in terms of describing the plot, it's a little bit atypical and it can be a little bit hard to describe, I think. But what it is, is it's a coming of age story. It's, as I mentioned earlier, sort of Spielberg exploring some of the items and things that have happened in his past. But again, like any good piece of art, what it does is it tells us something about the human condition, right? And that's what any good movie should do. And that's what we get out of this film. And like any good Spielberg movie, there is some comedy, some humor, Again, kind of understated humor included here, especially when you get to the final moments of the film. I think what this movie does especially well is really just show how complex family relationships can be, right? And how, you know, there's sort of that push and pull dynamic, how we learn from one another, how it's, of course, never an easy road. And there are always going to be obstacles that we have to navigate as part of a family. But I think it also illustrates, too, how a nurturing, supportive family can help you get to those goals. Even when there are a myriad of challenges and obstacles that a family might be going through, when you've got sort of those right components and you've got someone who's willing to support you, even though there may be all kinds of things happening around the environment, the world may be falling apart. And I'm being a little bit cryptic here. Obviously, I want to see the movie to, to know what I'm talking about with me, without me really getting into sort of the, the plot with a whole lot of depth. But again, it just shows how family can be a supportive thing and how it's an important thing. I think ironically, though, this is not necessarily a movie that needs to be seen on the big screen. Um, you know, again, beautifully directed, great music, all of that kind of stuff. But I think it's more of a contemplative piece, uh, so to speak. I think it's a movie you can enjoy at home with a beverage, uh, with some family close by. And you can sort of just sort of relax and take it all in in that type of environment. But it was a great night out at the movies uh, for my wife and I. We really both enjoyed the movie a lot. I do think it's going to get nominated for Best Picture. Um, I think the acting is great all around. Michelle Williams as Mitzi Fableman is fantastic. She does a great job in this. And there's almost kind of a dreamlike quality to her character. I don't know in reality how you know closely tied this is to Spielberg's own mother. I assume it's pretty close. But there's sort of this, again, dreamlike nature to her character and her trying to uh, sort of find true happiness and sort of, you know, wrestling with her own kind of familial responsibilities in the midst of that journey. I think Paul Dana does a great job as Burt Fableman, the father figure in this picture. It's more of an understated role for, for him. You know, it's not the sort of thing you would see in like There Will Be Blood where he's just sort of going ballistic on the screen because that's what the character calls for. There are, you know, a couple of moments where he kind of turns up the acting chops a little bit, but otherwise he plays this really well, does a really great job with that character. Actually, I think my favorite uh, character is played by Judd Hirsch in this movie, uh, and Judd plays Uncle Boris, and this is a character that doesn't have a ton of screen time, but you can see that this is a character that has a lasting impact on sort of the protagonist of this tale. Gabriel LaBelle does a great job as Sammy Fableman, who is the Spielberg character, so I think that 
you know, everything about this casting wise is exceptional. Uh, the acting all around is great. And again, I do think it'll get nominated for best picture, whether or not it actually wins, you know, who knows, we'll see what other uh, sort of films crop up and sort of, you know, sweep into that best picture category. But again, it's another great, uh, outing for Spielberg. In my opinion, as he's aged, he's become better as a director. You know, some people would disagree with that. I think that are my age who look back fondly on things like the, you know, early Indiana Jones films, um, Jaws, E.T., that kind of stuff. And they look at what he's doing now and see that it's a little bit more reflective in nature, but that's sort of natural, I think, given his age. But I think he's actually gotten better as a director as time has gone on. So again, excellent film, totally worth checking out. If you've seen The Fablemans, let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.